The Killing of a Sacred Deer was one of those movies I just wasn't sure was for me. The trailers that I saw made it look rather clinical and stilted and I wasn't enamoured with the trailers. But I had enough people tell me that this is a movie that you're going to like, you should check it out. Enough to give me that nudge to actually go and search it out and watch it for myself. And right from the off you are thrown into a weird, unsettling, icky kind of world. You have this surgeon called Stephen, played by Colin Farrell, who had someone die on his table several years prior. And he takes Martin, which is that guy's son, into his life ever so slightly. He meets up with him at diners, he has conversations, he tries to be that father figure that Martin lost on that surgery table. And the conversations that they have are very polite. Very, very polite and very off-putting. There is no contractions in this movie. Everybody speaks slowly, perfunctory and to the point, enunciating each and every word. And it's off-putting. It's weird to hear happening. It's not the usual language that we're used to people speaking like. And it's unusual. And even just that little quirk itself puts you in the back foot makes you wary of what's actually happening. You have lots of very still images as well, or the camera slowly moving. It has this strange image of following Colin Farrell round about his hospital from a high up angle, given the sort of thought that he is a sort of lofty life giver. He's the person that can take away or save your life, so deemed so. And as the movie moves on, Stephen starts to bring Martin into his family. He has a wife who he loves, he has a daughter who's about Martin's age, and he has a son who's a little bit younger. And Martin comes in and settles into the family. He, you know, fits in perfectly well. He's very polite, as is everybody in this movie, talking very politely, very to the point, very carefully, very measured. At one point, he meets Stephen and says to him, you kill my father on the table and I feel to make amends, you have to kill one of your family members to make things even. To which Stephen's a little bit taken back, as you would be, and then he gives them this other ultimatum. They're going to lose the ability to walk or use their limbs, his family members. Then they are going to be unable to eat and then they will start to bleed from the eyes and when this happens they have hours left to live, unless Stephen chooses one of them to die already. And minutes after this, you have uh, one of his kids just falling down. And Stephen, being the practical uh, physician that he is, feels that there must be a scientific reason behind this. He gives him a barrage, a test, to try and figure out what's going wrong with his family uh, to no avail. Nothing seems to happen. There seems to be nothing on the test results saying that there is a medical problem here. They just seem to be unable to move, unable to eat. And Martin, very patiently and, and very stiltedly tells Stephen that this is just what's going to happen. He has to make a choice. He has to kill one of his family members to save the other two members. This is an off-putting movie in almost every way, from its subject matter to its performances, to its language, to its visual style, to its weird score. Everything here is designed to put you on the back foot, to make you feel uneasy, to make you feel kind of icky and dirty, which the movie does make you feel. When that happens to Stephen's life, he starts to snowball into craziness. He can't understand what's happening. He tries to bargain with Martin, tries to uh, work things out with him. It creates a really strange change of a character. This is a character who's used to giving life, who's used to saving people's life and being seen as a kind of god um, in people's eyes. And here, he has zero power. All he has is a choice to make about which one of his family members will die or they will all die. It is a really strange movie, but I think it's one that you have to see. It is strange by tone, strange by the script, by the performances, by almost everything, but compelling, really compelling. It draws you into its tail, it keeps you captivated, keeps you on the edge of the seat, and as the movie moves on, it gets really tense, it gets really scary. You don't know what is going to happen to whom, when. This is one of the weirdest movies I've seen recently and I loved it for it. It just throws everything at the screen. It is controlled and measured at the same time. The, the filmmaker knows exactly what he's doing. The performances are not perfect. And everything about this movie just works and works tremendously well. It will make you feel nauseous at the end of it. This is a smart horror movie that 
not that people have claimed as horror, you claim it as more drama, but this is a terrifying movie. There is no answers to be found in this either about what or w what's happened to the family or why, it just is, and you've just to take it at face value. I think The Killing of a Sacred Deer is a must watch. If you're a movie fan, you need to check this movie out. It is worth your time. It really is. I gave it five out of five. Loved the movie. Thought it was tremendous. Don't know if I'll ever go back to it. May do. May not. I'd love to know your thoughts on it though. Have you seen The Killing of a Sacred Deer? Let me know in the comment box below if you hated it, loved it and why. And I'll see you next time on Man Versus Film.